chapter 15 in class exercise 2 problem number 15.8 the automobile has a weight of 2700 pound is traveling forward at 4 feet per second when it crashes into the wall if the impact occurs in 0 0.06 seconds determine the average impulsive force acting on the car assume the brakes are not applied if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the wheels and the pavement is 0 0.3 Calculate the impulsive force on the wall if the brakes were applied during the crash. The brakes are applied to all four wheels so that all the wheels slip, means they do not rotate. So there are two parts of the question. In the first part, uh, in both the parts, by the way, the car traveling in this direction at four feet per second hits the wall and we need to calculate the impulsive force. In the first part, determine the average impulsive force acting on the car. So that is the force applied by wall on the car. And at that time, the brakes are not applied. And for the second part of the question, when the brakes are applied, car will slip on the surface and car hits the wall. And it, we need to calculate the average impulsive force on the wall. See, the, the, be careful with the words. It says on the wall. So car applies force on the wall in this direction. So this is for the second part. This is for the first part. Okay, so we will write down the solution for each part separately, starting with the coordinate system direction. So our coordinate system says that x axis going right is positive and y axis going up is positive. This is our assumption. Uh, you can also change this. If you, you can assume that going left is positive as well because the car is going left. Uh, now, next step is draw the impulse momentum diagram. So, initial momentum of the car mv1 plus impulsive force applied on the car by the wall that is F average times delta t. So we don't use integration here because it, the, the problem uh, has already given us the average time which is 0 0.06 seconds. So we, uh, we can replace this integral f dt by f average delta t. Okay? Because we are calculating the average force. And as a result, this is the final momentum of the car, mv2. Now after crash, car stops moving, so its final momentum is zero. Okay, and now it's time to write down the impulse momentum equation that mv1, again we use the scalar approach here because the motion of the car is only along x direction. We only talk about x axis, not y axis. So mv1 plus f average delta t equals mv2. Now mass of the car is not given. 2200 is weight of the car. So to find the mass, we need to divide weight by gravitational attraction, which is 32.2. Gravitational acceleration, which is 32.2. Uh, multiply by V1. In this case, it's minus 4 because 4 is in the left side and we assume that going right is positive. Plus F average, this is what we need to determine and the impact occurs in 0 0.06 seconds equals final momentum of the car which is zero since this is negative term it goes to the uh, it when we move that to the right side of the equal to sign that will become positive so f average is nothing but this multiplication divided by 0 0.06 and that is 5590 and this is force so unit is pound so this is the force exerted by the wall onto the car so average impulsive force acting on the car, F average, when brakes are not applied. That's part one of the problem. Now for part two, we do the same thing, but now the brakes are applied. So initial momentum plus impulse. This is the force coming from the wall onto the car. But now, since brakes are applied, the car will slip on the ground. So there is friction, which actually helps to stop the car as well. So that friction force is at the contact here. So there is impulse coming from friction as well, F delta T. And this is F average delta T. So this F average is coming from the wall. And this F F is coming is because of the friction between the wheels of the car and the road. 
and as a result car stops moving so again the final momentum mv2 is zero so let's write down the equation that mv1 plus sigma f delta t fi delta t equals mv2 and going right is positive as well so why do we have sigma term here because we have two impulses so we need to count both the impulses so if this is mv1 plus f average delta t plus f f delta t equals mv2 Now it's time to substitute the numbers here. So this is 2700 divided by 32.2 multiplied by minus 4 plus F average multiplied by 0 0.06. Friction force. How do we get the value of friction force? So friction force can be calculated using the normal force. So I am going to write that on the, um, on the side here. For this problem, if this is the car, then W is the weight of the car, then there is normal force from the car ground, which is same as the weight, and friction force FF is mu times normal force. So it's mu times weight of the car, because normal force and balance is the weight, and value of mu is given as 0 0.3 here, kinetic friction, uh, kinetic coefficient of friction. So it's 0 0.3 times 2700, so this is 810 pound. Um, so this, this is pound, um, and the number is 810. So that's the value of friction force. So that we substitute here. So 810 multiplied by 0 0.06 is equal to 0. So in this formula, uh, the only unknown is F average, so we can calculate F average. And that is 4,780 pounds. But this is the force which is acting by the wall on the car. But we need to calculate the force acting on the wall by the car. That force is the same magnitude but the opposite direction. So this is from the wall. On the car, and this is by the car on the wall. It's the Newton's third law of motion. Equal uh, every action has equal and opposite reaction. So when wall applies this force on the car, car applies the same force on the wall but in the opposite direction. So now that's the entire solution. So we have drawn impulse. And momentum diagram applied the linear impulse and momentum equation and calculated the force when the brakes are not applied and when the brakes are applied and you can clearly see the difference that this is actually 5600 approximately and this is 4780 so that is like it's more than like thousand pound difference between the force when the brakes are applied and not applied so applying brake is much more safer because the friction helps to reduce the impulsive force.